morning, everyone. Good morning. And welcome to St. Mary's. The Lord is here. The Lord is here. The Spirit is with us. Welcome wherever you come from. You are very welcome. And please take our greetings to your home congregation when you go home. You should have in your possession a copy of the order of service, a copy of the pew sheet, and a hymn book. If you don't have a hymn book, we will allow you to nip up and get one quickly. Please leave the order of service behind when you leave, but do take the pew sheet home with you. Um, there's quite a bit going on though, it doesn't necessarily always get it to the pew sheet. The pew sheet has a deliberate error on it, just to see who noticed, and it's on the first Sunday of September, you will have seen that it says that there will be a benefice communion at Brantham starting at 10 o'clock. Well, that's absolute nonsense. There will be a benefice communion at Brantham, but it will start at 10.30. If you choose to arrive for 10 o'clock, we'll be very pleased to see you anyway. From the beginning of September, we will recommence our 8 o'clock BCP communions here, and the main service when it's here at St. Mary's will begin at 10 o'clock, and at Brantham, the main service will begin at 10.30 and we continue to alternate our main services between the two churches. I'm very happy to report that the wedding bookings are rolling in for next year, and I've already got two bookings for 2023, though sadly they are both for after I have retired. So I've had to say to the couples, I have no idea who will be conducting your weddings, but you will get married, so it'll be fine. So please take the pew sheet home with you, pray about the things that you see there, and more importantly, perhaps pray about the things that aren't there. Particularly, this afternoon we are doing a baptism. Please pray for the family and the young man who will be baptized. And on Friday, there is a wedding here and on next Sunday, there will be a baptism for that wedding party where the sister of the bride is coming over from France. And while all the family are together, they're taking the opportunity to baptize the girl who's called Scarlet. So lots to look forward to in the life of the church. Thank you for continuing to look after each other and by wearing masks in church. I know it's difficult singing with a mask on, but we'll do our very best. So we stand to sing our opening hymn, which is number 205. Hymn number 205.
Listen to the organist. Last man. <laughs> Last man. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. May the Father forgive you by the death of his Son, and strengthen you to live in the power of the Spirit all your days. Amen. We pray together the collect, which you'll find on the front page of your pew sheet in the top right-hand corner. God of glory, the end of our searching, help us to lay aside what prevents us from seeking your kingdom and to give all that we have to gain the pearl beyond all price through our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our hymn is number 375. Hymn number 375.
remain standing for the gospel as Howard comes to read for us. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, my Lord. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. Jews then disputed among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life and I will raise them up on the last day for my flesh is true food and my blood is true drink. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate and they died, but the one who eats this bread will live forever. This is the Gospel of the Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. As you know, I've been doing some reading on the subject of bread. The author was doing some of his research in Egypt, watching how a man worked in his field there, how it was watered from the amazing river that runs through Egypt, and then how it got worked into bread. But he noticed when he went into the bakery to take some photographs that the people working in the bakery were nervous when he produced his camera. And then later on when they went into a cafe to eat some of the bread with all the lovely side dishes that came with it, the waiters appeared to be nervous also. And so he asked his guide, well, why why is it that these people are showing signs of being deeply uneasy? And it was explained to him that in Egypt, bread is a political thing. Because it is used as a weapon of control of the masses. 
the word used for that type of bread in Egypt means life. And the rulers have gotten on down the centuries and indeed the ages that he who controls bread controls the people. And his guide said to the author, if I may give you a word of advice, as we continue our travels, if somebody stops you to ask you to ask you what you are doing, what research you are involved in for your book, do not tell them that you are researching bread because it is dangerous to do. And I thought, oh my goodness. We take bread as being something that's just wonderful to eat and we have fun baking it. But I had never, in spite of doing two years of history at university, really truly considered the power of bread and that he who controls the bread controls the people. It's quite a sobering reflection. It was my memories of eating bread are happy ones. Sitting around a table with people that I love, having bread and cheese together. How wonderful. It doesn't have to be a 10 course meal with wine at every course and the cures afterwards and then they have to carry you out for it to be a really good meal. Bread and cheese with people that you love is a fabulous gift from God. And Jesus, in this continuing discourse, which feels to the preacher as though it's been going on forever, because for the last four Sundays now, the text has been, I am the living bread. I am the bread that came down from heaven. I am the bread of life, but there is always more to think about. And Jesus in this section says, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Those who eat this bread will live forever. This bread, this living bread, is my flesh which I give for the life of the world. So clearly, we're talking about more than just bread, even though bread is really powerful. We're talking about life and death and eternity. And hasn't just this week in the history of the world taught us that the difference between life and death and eternity is just a second. And it would be really tempting to become very severely depressed by everything that's been going on around us, not only in Plymouth, and dear God, that was bad enough, but in Afghanistan and in places that are just boiling, or flooding, or burning. And yet, when you think about it, the world into which Jesus proclaimed these words had the same sort of problems. Those who controlled the bread controlled the people and their lives. Death came swiftly and unexpectedly to many. There were diseases that prowled the land. And even in those circumstances, Jesus was able to say, I am the living bread. Those who eat this bread will live forever. And we need to take seriously what Jesus says to us. Because he meant it. And so we need to do 
dig deeper to find out what it means to truly eat the bread and what it meant when he said, the bread which you eat is my flesh, which I am giving for the life of the world. And in this carefully crafted gospel that we call John's Gospel, we are meant from this reading to think back to the beginning, where in the beginning there was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the Word came and became flesh and dwelt among us. How carefully John crafts his story so that flesh then becomes our bread which gives us life so that we can live forever. But living forever isn't something that we look forward to that happens in the long by and by. It begins now. And it begins just as Jesus' life was involved with in being broken for others in a life of service. So when you come to receive your bread at the communion table today, have a think as you receive that wafer and as you consume it, what it means to you that you are eating the living bread that was given not only for the life of the world, but for you. And how are you going to then give your life as a life of service? Because there's a lot to do in our villages. There are people who are desperately lonely. There are people who need to know that they are loved, not only by us, but by God. There are people who are asking deep spiritual questions which we as Christians are equipped to be able to answer. However inadequately, we can share what we know to be true about the Lord Jesus Christ. How he came because he loves us, how he died because he loves us, how he rose again wonderfully to give us hope because he loves us, and how he sent his Holy Spirit so that we can serve like he did and give hope to the people around us. Thanks be to God for that wonderful living bread that came down from heaven and was given for the life of the world. Amen. Please would you stand as we affirm our faith in the words of the creed. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God, the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please would you sit or kneel as Roy comes to lead us in our intercessions. And as he comes up, I'd like to tell you that you're going to be seeing quite a lot more of Roy. This is Roy Seedon. He moved into an East Bogart during the pandemic and so has been locked down with all of us and hasn't really had a chance to get to know us all. But Roy is a retired priest. Yay! And, 
and I was very glad that he is with us and he is now, he has applied for permission to officiate and he will be joining the ministry team to help out occasionally every Sunday and at every funeral. <laughs> something like that. So welcome Roy and thank you for leaving us. No, thank you for that introduction <laughs> so much. Let us pray. We shall use the responses, uh, Lord in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, seven whole days, not one in seven, we will praise you, especially that you never stop giving. We thank you especially for your gifts of life and love to all people, fully expressed in your Son, Jesus Christ, the living bread. We also thank you today for his mother, Mary, on this her feast day. We pray for Jesus' church, especially in East Burkholt, as we seek to serve you in this place and across the benefits. We pray for Red Staff, our bishops and archbishops, and all who hold office or volunteer in parish and benefice lives. And as we all journey through our lives this week, may your Holy Spirit help us to be aware both of your gifts to us and also of your being ever present with us and in us, even in our flawed humanity. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you that through Mary you gave the world your Son. He in turn welcomed children in their vulnerability and powerlessness. So we pray for the children's society today as their boxes are collected in. We are thankful for all those who give time, talent, energy and money to this work, whether as full-time workers or volunteers. We especially pray for the children the society supports and loves, that they may grow into happy and healthy adults. We remember those who are confused or angry, estranged or feel lost. And we pray for all children in our families, our parish and across the benefits, including those who have received their exam results this week, whether for good or ill. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Father, we thank you that you are never absent from this world that you created and sustained. We pray for our fragile planet in the light of the report of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change and of the ongoing extreme weather events in the Mediterranean region, Western America and Canada, Germany and China. Give solace to all those affected in any way by these extremes of weather, especially those who have lost loved ones, livelihoods and homes. Give strength to all those who seek to relieve their plight and give the gift of urgent, timely and collaborative leadership to all attending the Global Climate Change Conference in Glasgow this November, as they seek to tackle the climate crisis which continues to threaten your world. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you that you never turn away from suffering, but face it full on, standing without reservation, crucified and risen in your Son, with all who suffer, whether in body, mind, or spirit, whatever their circumstances. We pray for those in pain, those who watch, those who care, those who wait, those approaching death, those who have died, those who have bereaved. By name, we pray for Francis Goodchild, Helen Wheatley, Carol Whitby, Val and Barry Grantham, William Marston, Rosie Fee, Margaret Turner, Jonathan Fermor, Claire Brady, Mandy and Trevor Churchill, 
Michael Hawthorne, David Bennett, Gavin, May and Lucy Van Hinsburg, Judy and Paul Good, Jill Jones. And we pray for all who grieve, especially in the family and friends of Ken Catamol and Reverend Andy Todd, recently priesthood. And we remember also the Plymouth community at this hard time, those suffering in Afghanistan, and those who resist the vaccine. And in a moment's silence, remember any others dear to us or on our hearts. May those departed rest in peace and rise in glory. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Hear our prayer. So, Father, we thank you that you always listen to us, even when we don't know what to say, and in those moments when we're not sure about who we're saying it to. But you're faithful, even when we are not, and have brought us thus far. So help us to talk with you and listen to you, in the everyday moment, in the liturgy of the church, in those prayers which have carried so many in the past, and in the many conversations with you in between. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour. Have you managed to count all those hands? <laughs> Thank you very much. Number one five four. In number one five four.
The Lord is here. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Although we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world.
please turn to the front page of your pew sheet for the post-communion prayer, which is in the bottom left-hand box, and we'll follow that with the benefice prayer, which is next to it. Lord of all mercy, we, your faithful people, have celebrated that one true sacrifice, which takes away our sins and brings pardon and peace
shine like stars in a darkened world, hold out the word of life, be glad and rejoice in the Lord Jesus. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name